So what we can conclude, if we walk our Jehovah's Witness friends through this, and again, we do this in a whole chapter. I invite you to take, take a look at the book. Um, somebody said I should do this. At the, uh, I'll do this at the end. But you take a look at the book and, and see if it hopefully makes, us, makes sense, even more so than when I'm up here with slides that aren't working. Um, but what we would want to do is walk the Jehovah's Witnesses through this, one step at a time, so that you can get to this summary. And that's what's really important. That's where the impact I've seen occurs, is when you walk them through it one at a time and you get them to quietly admit whether they do actually articulate it or not, but you at least get them to see that you've laid siege to the very wall that is supporting their doctrine. And that wall can come down when they see this. In spite of the fact, if you are a Jehovah's Witness, you must believe that in spite of the fact that the organization was teaching things they now admit are in direct contradiction to the truth. Lies is what they were. Direct contradiction to the truth. That when Jesus returned in 1914 and evaluated them, he said that they were dispensing spiritual truths at the proper time and endorsed them as his faithful and discreet slave. In other words, Jesus lied himself. You would have to believe that in order to believe the official account of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Secondly, in spite of being president in 1914, Jesus never cleared up heretical teachings before declaring them to be the faithful and discreet slave, and he let things like his own identity and his return slide for many years after 1919. Third, Jesus allowed the organization to make no fewer than 12 false prophecies in their history. Fourth, in spite of being present, Jesus has allowed his true organization to flounder in darkness and tack from side to side rather than directing them into spiritual truth. If you are a Jehovah's Witness, you have to believe that. That's what you have to accept. And you are going to find Jehovah's Witnesses struggling with that concept. And the question that we usually finish with is this. With the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, uh, Society, never admitting to knowing when they are actually in darkness, they can make no claim to be out of it at any given time. While errors and in incidental issues hold no real significance to a non-witness, errors and in interpretations about essential issues are important. For example, if we can't trust their interpretations on Christmas, something trivial, how can we possibly trust their interpretations on something essential like the deity of Christ, which is what Bruce is going to talk about here momentarily. Do you have any questions about this? I know it's a ton of information. I know it was hard to follow, particularly today, but I want to encourage you with this because, to be very honest, when I initially looked at this, I thought, boy, it's interesting. Yeah, it's kind of interesting stuff. And I had an opportunity to um, talk with uh, Don Cameron. And, and he said, you know, I want to kind of give you, I want you to take a look at my book and, and see what you think. And I said, yeah, I'd be happy to. And I looked at it, and he kind of approached it. He brought in a few things like the idea of the erasing things and doing things like that. And I was curious. I, I was thinking, okay, with, with the information that I, I had and the information, you know, some of the ideas of drawing and making it look simpler and things like that, I wonder how this pans out. And so I happened to have, um, at the, that particular point in time, um, I've been working on a Jehovah's Witness over our house for, I don't know, three weeks or so. And they finally sent an elder with him. And um, which, you know, I can say this to you people. I tell this at, at different churches. I, I never really allow that. Um, and it's in the book why. But, but in this, in, like in this particular case, when he showed up, I said, um, who are you? I said, oh, I'm, I'm George. And I said, you an elder? And he said, yeah, actually I am. I said, well, what are you doing here? <laughs> and he said, well, Steve couldn't make it, so um, I came with Chris. And I turned to Chris, and I said, did you invite him here? He said, well, yeah. I said, you know this is my house, right? He kind of said, well, yeah. I said, my parents live in the next street over, four-tenths of a mile from here. They gave birth to me. They, they provided me with food and shelter, put me through college, and they don't bring people over to my house without calling me. You have my phone number. He kind of said, well, yeah. I said, you just think it's, that's OK? And he was just really floored. The reality is, is we really have to 
uh, start to assume a little bit, in my opinion, I could be wrong, there's a lot of brilliant people in here. My opinion is we need to set the tone of who's in charge in our own home. You don't get to just bring people in and out of your home. And, and frankly, they were stunned. And I, I have done that before and turned them away. I said, go back when Steve can come back, you bring him back. But you don't get to bring people in my house. In this particular case, I kind of realized that I was teetering with this one guy. They might not come back. So I was like, all right, come on in. And I thought, you know, I've done some different things on this faithful and discreet slave thing. And I'd like to do that, that whiteboard thing. You know, I, I, I've never tried that. I want to do that. And we walked through just what we walked through here. And at the end of the hour, the elder was almost in tears, literally. He had tears in his eyes, and his voice was quivering. And he said, what do you think I should do? And, and to be very honest, I've seen the Holy Spirit work in the past. But I've never seen him work like that. And I almost blurted out, I don't, I don't know what you should do. <laughs> I, I, but I said, I said, well, honestly, I said, listen, I think you need to put down the watchtower and get yourself two, three versions of the Bible because the Bible is not, you know, translating words is not a code. Not one word always equals one word in different languages. They try to exp each different translator tries to express themselves in different ways. And I like the Blue Letter Bible. Was it Wilbur? Is it your ministry, Wilbur, that does the Blue Letter Bible? Somebody was talking about it. Who was? Okay. Um, you know, I, I think that that is, is really a, a good resource. And I love that. I, get as many Bibles as you can to really get a feel for it. But I told this guy, I said, I think you really need to put it down. And I think you need to put the watchtower down pick up a Bible. And, you know, I, I do other things uh, that we've talked about. Uh, you know, where I give them my phone number as soon as they walk in because I realize they may hear something. And, get in the, and I told them, I said, listen, I realize when you get in the car, they're supposed to come back next, the following Tuesday. I said, I realize when you get in the car, you guys are going to shred me up. You know, that's fine. You're going to say, oh, he's crazy, he's stupid, whatever. You can do, that's fine. But when, you, when God wakes you up at 2 o'clock in the morning and you're looking at the ceiling, you're not going to be able to blame me. It's going to be you and him. And this is the thing that, these are the things that you're going to have to work on. And so I just, you know, it, it I, and he said, you know, he said, well, I said, you guys will be back next Tuesday, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I kind of laughed. I said, no, you won't. No, we will, we will. I, so listen, I'll be praying for you. You guys can come over. You can call anytime you want. And, of course, they disappeared. I may have been the first one around the walls of Jericho. I may have been the second. But I'm confident that there is going to be a seventh time. Right, amen? Yes, sir. Yeah, have you tried uh, some of the positions where they've gone from one position to another and back to the original? Yes, and that's actually, thank you for bringing that up. You're like my straight man over there. <laughs> if you're interested a lot of this, well, all the stuff's in the book. We have some additional things other than what I showed you here. Uh, all this stuff's in the book. You are, um, the book's out there. Also, if you see these, I should have explained this. Um, these are the Bible verses that pertain to essential doctrine. Uh, as far as Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, these were here last year. These are our cards that are self-adhesive cards. You put inside the cover of your Bible. That's where I put mine anyway. So I don't have to... Try to sit and memorize every single verse on 